All right, Imogen 300, this is Dr. Wheeler back to talk about LabVIEW again. Um, so today we're going to be talking about how to make things appear and disappear on your front panel in LabVIEW. In the thermistor assignment, you're asked to set up a VI which gives the user a menu so that they can select for different uh, types of graphs. And you can see what graphs, graphs are present. You can see Fahrenheit, Celsius, both the thermistors, one of the thermistors at a time. So what we're going to be doing here today is, is showing you how you can uh, make those graphs appear and disappear on the front panel so that when the user selects uh, Fahrenheit and thermistor 1 it shows that graph and then when you change to a different graph the Fahrenheit graph will disappear and uh, the next graph will pop up and that's the one that the user will see. Um, so what I've set up here is a basic VI example. So we've got uh, two simulate signals blocks. One of them is producing a sine wave up here and one of them is producing a square wave. I'm converting both of these into waveforms, so we just have a waveform data type that we can plot. Down here, this is a wait until next millisecond multiple, so this controls how fast the loop executes. The reason I'm doing this is I don't have a DAC connected to this computer right now, so the DAC is not controlling the execution timing of the VI, so if I was to just not have this here, the, the loop would run really, really, really fast. Um, which can make your graphs really hard to read and also uses a lot more system resources to, to run. All right, and then I also have my stop button and my while loop. So when we run this VI, we'll start simulating uh, these two waves, this, the sine wave and the square wave, and we want to be able to plot those and we want to have the user be able to see either the sine wave or the square wave or both of them together on the same graph. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to need to set up the graphs for this. And to do that, I'm going to use an extra container here that will allow me to switch back and forth between the graphs later on. So I'm going to come to the front panel, and I'm going to go to this layout palette, and I'm going to grab the tab control. So this is going to give us a tab structure where I can have multiple different graphs on different pages of this tab control. And you can stretch this out to make it bigger, right? And we want three different types of graphs, so I want to be able to see the sine wave, the square wave as a separate graph, or both of the uh, waves together as the third graph. So I'm going to right-click on this, and I am going to do Add Page either after or before. It doesn't really matter, um, just to get another page here. All right, and you can go ahead and you can rename these for your, so you give each of these a title. So let's have our first one will be the sine wave. Then we can do the square wave. And finally, we'll have both. And we've got some pages here where we can put our graphs. Um, so let's go ahead and let's add those graphs in. So I'm going to select the waveform graph. Stretch those out, and we can add one to each of these. Like so. Okay, so we've we've got our waveform graphs are popping up in our block diagram now. And when we start to get a lot of graphs like this, it's really important to be good about documenting what is what in our block diagram. So here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to rename these so I know which of these graphs is which. So let's go to the sign tab, and we're going to label this the sign graph so that we know that in our block diagram. You can see the labels updated in the block diagram also. Same thing here, this is the square. And this one's gonna be both. All right, so now we've got our graphs, so let's go ahead and send the data to those. So first thing we can do is we can send the sine wave to the sine graph and the square wave to the square wave graph. And this both graph, the way we get two lines on a waveform graph is we send it an array of waveforms. 
So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go to the array palette and grab build array. And you can stretch this one out so that you can have two different inputs here. So I'll send our two waveform variables into the build array and we will get a waveform array out. All right, you can see that the wire got thicker here to let me know that that's an array of waveforms instead of just a single waveform by itself. So there's our graphs, all right? And at this point, I can run this VI and it's gonna start running here and I can click on the tabs and I can switch between those graphs, which is pretty cool. But let's take this, let's take this a step farther. So a lot of times, we want the program itself to be able to decide what's showing rather than the user or like we want to have a different type of menu rather than these tabs um, on our front panel. So this is a, a cool feature that we can do in LabVIEW is right now our tab is considered a tab control. And that means I go to the front panel and the user selects which of these graphs is showing. But in LabVIEW, anything that's a control, you can also use as an indicator or vice versa. So anything that's by default an indicator, you can use as a control. The way we do that is we go to our tab control, right click it, and we're going to change it to an indicator, like so. And now, it's, now I've got this, this input here and I can decide what gets to be shown on the tab control, right? So if the user comes in here while this is running, they're not gonna be able to select this anymore but whatever I, I set in the block diagram as which tab is supposed to be showing is what's going to show up for the user. So I can go here to the input terminal, right click, and I can create a constant, and we're going to get an enumerated constant popping up here, right? So this is already set up with our different options in here, so I can click on that. So we've got our sign, our square wave, or both. Those match our tabs, right? Um, and what we can do is we can set up a case structure around this constant so that based off of a menu input that the user selects, it's going to set a constant value that tells which tab is going to show up. So let's go ahead and do that. So to get our case structure, I'm going to right click, go to structures, case structure. And we'll draw that case structure right there. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to have these, these same options, the sign, the square, or the both option controlling this case structure to decide what's uh, showing on the tab control. So by default, the case structure has two cases, true or false. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to make it so that our cases are sign, square, or both. And the easiest way to do that is actually take this constant, if we copy it and paste it over here, when we wire this constant to the um, case selector terminal on the case structure, it's gonna automatically update the cases with the correct names. And we need to add a third case. So we right click and you do add case after or before, it doesn't matter, right? And it's going to keep updating that and it updates based off of the values that are in that uh, constant that, we've, we, that we created. Um, which is nice. So we don't have to go and manually type in what these different cases are. They're just created for us that way. So that's a nice way to save some time when you're setting up your VI. All right. So there's our, our different cases. And what we need to do here is we need to tell LabVIEW what to do in each of these cases. So you notice right now this tunnel that's coming out to the tab control is, is not filled in. Um, it's white in the center. That's letting us know that we have some cases where that tunnel is not wired and we need to give that an output so that it knows what to do for every single case that we have. So any place we like this where we don't have that uh, behavior in the case set up, we can just right click, create constant, and we just select the value that we want. So this is the both case. So we're going to set both here. Let's go to the square wave. Um, so on the square case, we want square, not the sign. And then Go to the next one to the sign. We'll create a constant there, and that's sign and sign, so that is working for us. Okay, so now whatever we set here is going to tell which tab is 
showing. But this is not really what we want, right? Because you have to go in the block diagram to set this, this constant value. Um, what really what we want is we want a control on the front panel that the user can select like from sort of like a drop down menu and select which of the cases they want to see. So the way we can do that is right click on that constant and we're going to change that to control. Right. And now we have this enumerated control has appeared on our front panel. We can drag that out a little bit so we can actually read the whole thing. Right, and we can click through here and we'll get our different case values so they can select that way. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So if I run this, it starts to run. If I go down here and click on the tabs, they no longer do anything, right? Because this is an indicator, not a control. But I can come to our enumerated controls, so this, this menu, and click through the options there. So that's a different way to control that. All right, let's go ahead and stop that. Um, the last thing we can talk about is how to clean up the look of this, right? Because right now this still looks like a control and your user's gonna go and try and, and click on that and not be able to and get frustrated. So we can fix that if we right click on the tab control or tab indicator in this case, you can go to visible items and we can start removing things from the front panel. So that won't affect the operation, it just affects the look of the front panel. So if I uncheck tabs here, now the tabs go away and we just have this gray box where a graph appears and then the user gets to select which graph is showing via that tab there. It won't update until I start running the VI, but we'll go ahead and do that. There you go, and we can select through that way. All right. And then we could also, like say this label is kind of distracting here, we can go to visible items and uncheck label and get rid of that also. Um, we can even get rid of these labels in here. So you can uncheck that. You could go through the different cases and, and hide all the labels on those if you think that's a little bit cleaner look. You might also spend some time to make the graphs all exactly the same size and be right on top of each other so that they don't appear to jump around uh, when you select between different cases. But that is how you can set up different graphs and have a nice, neat-looking uh, front panel for your VI that changes with user input. So hopefully you guys find that useful. Um, and as always, you can swing by the lab and ask questions if you need a little bit of help getting this set up for your Thermistor project.